What's up guys, new episode of Site Visit. We're gonna head over to Cambridge and check on the final touches before the board hangers show up. And then we're gonna hit selfie where the plasters are already on site. And we're talking about a two coat plaster system and a single coat plaster system, when we use it and why we use it. Let's get going. Guys, we are at Project 170. Uh, we just had a meeting with the architect we do that every two weeks, just to touch base, see what's going on in the job site. Everything we got going on today, all the guys are here prepping for our blue board and plaster. We talked about last week, all this resilient channel. Most of this has been installed. We actually have James from our mill workshop on site and he's installing all of his blocking for his cabinetry. Uh, the reason we do this, this gives him the opportunity to make sure he's got the blocking he needs before board goes up and then he's chasing uh, any of the the blocking in the wall, especially with a resilient channel like this where you know there isn't that normal uh, 16 inch on center blocking. So he wants to make sure he has the adequate blocking that he needs. So a couple things going on. We talked about this ceiling last week and you can see how this all framed out. A few of you guys actually reached out about the suspended ceiling track system. We, we discussed actually using it. Uh, it didn't work out here for a number of reasons. So we end up using the, the hi-hat resilient channel, whatever you want to call it up on the flat uh, and you can see how we've kind of structured you know all of this you know unique blocking to make sure that we were going to be able to span across this ductwork. Brian actually went to Best Buy late last night and picked up a brand new TV for his uh, commu computer monitor replaced I'm just kidding uh, we get the TV um, mocked up on the wall there and the reason we got the TV on site is because Brian got the the swivel bracket and there's actually going to be a niche in that wall to make sure that the TV is centered so Rather than going off specs, which we've been failed by before, figure we get the TV on site, mount the bracket to it, figure out exactly where that TV is gonna sit so we can get the blocking in the wall for that TV. We've used these before actually. So you guys in the previous episode saw all the boxes going up the stairs. A few of you guys had joked about this being able to plug your phone in any step you were sitting at. Uh, what they are is they're actually lights. So we've installed these in preparation for the board, make sure he's got what he needs. So when he comes, we can tuck the board behind there, but realistically we'll pull these off and then that will all get plastered in and painted and they'll, uh, they'll be nice and flush in within that plaster. Up top here, one of the things that the, the architect was asking us about is this conduit and making sure that it is painted and anywhere on the ceiling, I think we've talked about this before, but anywhere on the ceiling we'll paint it to match. Uh, and then over here we'll paint it to match the, the black truss or the dark gray truss. Um, but we were also chatting about this. This piece of ductwork here is actually a four inch by 10 inch oval. It comes out from the mechanical room over there. What this actually is, is our ERV exhaust this is part of the stale air that we're pulling out of this place the reason it's right here is because it lands right above the cooking area so anytime we're running cooking smells we can have a erv boost switch and that boost switch is going to basically ramp that erv up to 100 percent so we're exchanging that air at 100 percent capacity of that unit so we brought the ductwork over here it's tucked behind it this is really the only spot you'll ever see this ductwork because from below it's on the back side of that gir uh, that beam uh, so that, that will also be painted to match the beam. Uh, and we were just talking about different ways to kind of hide the straps uh, and just clean that up so it is really, really minimal. Uh, but let's jump over to the primary suite side of it uh, and we'll talk about a couple things over there. Is that for baseboard? Yes, sir. Basically what's going on is they got a two by six, they're ripping it down on the table saw. We actually made them stop so we could film this but that's giving us solid blocking for all of our baseboard. Again, doing this horizontal resilient channel creates some challenges as far as how we block things, how we mount our receptacles, all of that. And we're, we're going through and making sure that we're thinking about, well, the next trade, the finished carpenters are gonna come in and put baseboard in, you know, they're not gonna have anything to attach to. Uh, and, you know, actually in my previous commercial days, I remember a lot of these guys would basically diagonally, or diagonally nail baseboard to the, the drywall with glue behind it uh, and just rely on that. We don't want to do that here. We want to have a nice solid connection. So, so that's, that's a good, good detail. detail. This right here, you guys are gonna just gonna have to trust us on this because this is actually a niche and it gains us a few inches for our future hidden freezer that's gonna be here. And the reason we needed those couple inches is because we didn't want the cabinetry to be too far out. Um, but Doug, just make sure you get a good picture of that because we'll, we'll come back to that in, in a future future episode. 
Actually, I'm going to sneak behind Pat here. Pat's actually boxing in uh, one of our plumbing stacks. One of the things we were talking about with the electrician is we have a three gang box here. It's awfully tight to that plumbing chase uh, box out. So what we have going on there, order from left to right, is we have a light switch for the main lights, which is dimmable. A second switch for the shower light, also dimmable. They cannot be on the same circuit because the main lights and the, uh, are line voltage. The shower light is actually a low voltage. And that third switch is actually the boost switch for the bathroom. So when you're in here, you hit that button, it boosts the RV again up to that 100%. Uh, and the, the idea is that you have this delay timer. So after, you know, 30 minutes after you're, you, you're out of the bathroom, it would kick off. We're trying to reduce from a two to three because it just doesn't work. The switch plate's gonna be jammed into that corner. So one of the things that we kind of kicked around is what if we had a motion switch? What if we came in this bathroom and then a motion detector essentially said, hey, there's an occupant in this room, kick up the ERV to 100%. Now, if it was a bathroom fan in the space, probably be pretty annoying because you'd hear that fan ramp up every time you walked in. Being that it's an ERV located in a separate location, it doesn't really impact anything. And I think anytime you're in here, it just ramps up to 100%, exhausts that stale air. It's not gonna hurt anything and it's not gonna be a nuisance. So we're right now, we're actually very much right now looking into a couple different uh, occupancy sensors because we can't do one at the switch location. It's gonna have to be, I'm hoping up in that corner there. Uh, so it, it doesn't tr get triggered by anything outside of the room. But once you're in here, it, it does trigger. And then again, we do a, a delay uh, stop on it. So after 30 minutes of runtime and not seeing any occupant in the room, it would kick off. So last area. So Luke and Larry are working on detailing out these windows. Uh, again, going back to our resilient channel and kind of padding this wall out, you see how everything's been padded out and specific to this window, we're getting awfully tight to our aluminum mullions. So rather than just padding out that right side and hitting that aluminum mullion and having you know an irregular reveal on the right side and not the rest, the guys are going through making sure that the reveals around the entire window match what we're fixed by on that right side. And then from there, they're, they're basically detailing up any of the the risen tape, we have a, I'm doing that thing, Doug, where I don't breathe. <laughs> so Monday, we're, we actually have a blower door test here uh, and we'll do it at the end of the job, but we figured we'd do it now with our air barrier up and just see what improvement we've made since we started this project. Uh, so you have to stay tuned for the next episode uh, where we, we capture that and we talk about what our, our blower door rating was. Um, but that's an update here. Next week, like I said, we'll do the blower door test, but we'll also start hanging board and getting into plaster. Speaking of plaster, we're gonna go over to Selfie where they're actually in the process of plastering. I'm gonna show you a couple of the uh, systems that they're using, one being a traditional one coat. We're also doing some uh, two coat processes there uh, to help you know, with ultra flatness uh, with some of those big skylights that we showed you in last week's episode. So let's head over there. So Colby, you're doing a true two coat on this, right? Yep. Okay. So this is gypsum plaster? Yeah, gypsum, yeah. Yeah, here. No lime. Right. Where traditionally one coat is one, one, one coat is lime. Yeah, a lot of the times when if you're doing one coat, it's either um, diamond or unical. Yep. Which are both lime based. Yep. You can do gypsum on one coat, but it works much better. Two With two coat. Yeah. Why is that? Um, I just feel like the base coat it's not easy to fill a lot with uh, gypsum plaster if you're doing uh, one coat. Yeah. It's, it has to go on pretty thin. So it works much better if you have a level flat surface. Right. Which we on. didn't have a perfectly level flat surface here. So you're, you're setting, you're, you have reference lines in the corners, which are all your chalk lines. Yep. And then from there, you're basically filling out to that as your screed point. Is that right? Exactly. exactly. What we did at first was around all the edges, we base coated in first. Yeah. Basically are using that as our point to fill the mold too. Right, so now you're just filling in, exactly. using your long straight edge. Yep. You guys are pulling that across, mm -hmm. filling it in, and when you have any depressions, obviously your fingertips right here, right? Yep. You know, that'll get filled back in, and you exactly. just keep going over to that. Here. Now is that, will this be the finished surface? No, on top of this, we're gonna do a finished coat. And that will be a gyp as well? A gypsum based plaster as well. Gotcha. Yep. So one of the reasons that we're doing a two coat here is because the 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 sun pouring down out of the skylight. 
one of the big things, and Colby knew coming into this, is that I wanted this to, to wash the staircase. And this was, if you guys remember, this was a parting wall. We had framed on top of it to basically bring that, that planer from the, the lower section all the way up. However, we have these discrepancies in the wall. Now, looking back, there was probably an opportunity for us to, to correct that in the framing, uh, but we didn't, and these guys are on site. And originally, we were gonna do a single coat plaster on this wall. Uh, we opted to do the two coats so we could get these reference points and build out the highs and lows, or primarily build out the lows to meet the highs. And then we would have this flat wall. Uh, so when the light pours down it, we're not getting the, the waviness. Um, you know, I know in my personal home, I have this giant staircase with a ton of natural light and you can almost see the framing and you get the, the screw heads and things like that. You know, another, another thing with the screw heads, you don't see it here, but you see it on this wall over here. They, they mesh tape across all of the screw heads. Um, it's not something that's uh, necessary, but it's something that we've certainly seen an improvement on uh, as far as the screws popping through the finish. But this, it was the ceiling in there too coated as well? Yeah, the ceiling is too close. So this is in process right here. So in here, this room is actually done. Uh, they did this ceiling yesterday. And they, they start with the ceiling, that way anything that drops down get, isn't getting on a finished wall. You can see all the, the these drip marks. If this was a finished wall, this would be a pain in the butt. They'd have to protect this, uh, the, the wall while they're doing the ceiling. So ceiling, same thing. We're hitting our base coat and get, making sure that this, this, this ceiling is completely, completely, completely flat. Uh, now there's a lot of things that we've put, spent a lot of time on in in framing that we wanted to make sure that we hit, um, you know, right behind you, Doug, here is this transition point. So we wanted this line to come up and all of this kind of meet into one area. So we're actually, you know, it's gonna, that plaster will be built out and this will be the, the intersection point of this, this plane, this plane, this plane, and this, uh, and that. Um, that was really important. Same detail we talked about in last week's ep uh, episode is that this line right here is a really hard line and we want that to hit perfectly at the bottom of our windowsill. Uh, that way the windowsill has you know, a really intentional line underneath there. So all of these points are really important in making sure that we s we're, we're referencing and, and pulling straight edges. You can see this is actually, oh, not that, that's a piece of clapboard. Um, these are smaller, but you can see the straight edges that they're using out in that area. Um, Another area that's really important for us on this project is this wall, and this is why this wall is done first. This wall has to be dead, dead, dead flat. And the reason why is Ken and his team have built this bookcase that slides in, and it is tight up against here. It's got a small quarter inch reveal pressed up tight against that plaster. So they've essentially taken a straight edge and made sure that that's dead flat. So when we push our millwork up tight, have that quarter inch reveal, it's nice and, and consistent all the way down the side. The opposite side, is actually a regular detail which will create that quarter inch. This cube, I'm, I'm, I'm qu using quotes, this cube will actually become a lime plaster feature wall. Uh, and Colby and his team will actually be doing that as well, um, which will have a more natural look to it, you know, versus the uh, painted plaster everywhere else. Uh, but you can see even in some of these corners, this is a much more heavy duty mesh. So what that says to me is that, all right, some of those edges probably flare, flared up and there's a pretty heavy amount of plaster in order for them to hit their reference points all the way around. Well, they use a, a thicker mesh just to make sure that there's extra strength there. Um, I know you guys are gonna probably ask why we do plaster here instead of drywall. It's just what we do. Uh, we get asked every time. Another detail, great detail, great, great, great detail is the corners of the, the uh, corner bead are all soldered together. So it takes a couple extra minutes, but that makes sure that that seam never cracks uh, and it's consistent. They just take a file, grind that down, and then that's perfectly straight. Um, and this is really where it starts, is making sure that this is your reference point. So if this, if this section had to be pulled out, in or out, you're setting it off of this corner bead and essentially making sure that they're gonna snap a line here that will the, the reference from that to that, to this one, and to the opposite side. Uh, and making sure that, again, this wall is, is, is nice and flat. Um, but, you know, primarily in here, we're doing a single, a single coat system, which is traditional, but in the important walls, like the ceiling here, that feature wall, that millwork feature wall, those areas that we're, we are doing a two coat, spending a little extra money, a little extra time to make sure that they're dead flat. Um, and it really just comes down to, like I said, the skylight detail and uh, the amount of light pouring down there. 
um, with, with respect to the skylight, um, we can actually include a couple of pictures. We're not going to hop up on the roof, but the roofer was here yesterday uh, and got the skylights flashed in. And being that they're a, a low pitch roof, we actually had them custom fa fabricate some copper pieces. That's Mark Jordan uh, roofing. They fabricated, pulled the skylights out, flashed them uh, permanently, and now they're installed permanently. So when they go to install, actually back out here. So when they, when they go to plaster this, we'll have a stoppy right up against that, um, that skylight. And now you're just gonna have this straight white, this white line and, and a, a gloomy day. I think last time we were here it was gloomy too. And a gloomy day like today, it's just gonna look like pure white. Uh, but when it's, when it's blue skies, you can see it's just all you're gonna see is blue sky and then painted white uh, tube. You can see that's one of the straight edges, straight edges and it's essentially a piece of aluminum and it has that back edge for, I'm assuming for your fingertips, but also for, for rigidity so that doesn't, that doesn't bend. Uh, and especially as they get longer, they're going to be more apt to bend. And, um, and you've seen Colby will actually hold the top of one. And down below, he's got another guy dragging it across, making sure that that stays off of their reference points. Now, Colby, is it important to go in both directions? Yep. Um, yeah, it's always important to film both directions, um, especially on a, on a wall like this. The sunlight is going to want to follow any waves that are in the wall, so you could fill it one way and still be warped the other way. So, so you're basically uh, almost cross-hatching mm -hmm. until that final coat, and that final exactly. coat's really just the, 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 the butter spread, exactly. essentially, before paint. Yep, exactly. Cool. Yep, you can see this way. You, you guys started this this morning, right? Yep. So this is this, this is your second coat. Exactly. And then when will finish coat go on? Uh, one finished coat, and that'll take like probably about an hour and a half. But that will be done by the end of the day. Yeah, we'll be done today. So the goal today is to get this wall done. This wall done. This is your last two coat portion, and then everything else is single coat, right? Yeah. So single coat, we're not really ref we're referencing some with the, the, chalk, the, the, the chalk line, but we're not referencing with the, the long straight edges. It's more of a small trowel like this, exactly. burnished you know, in one, in one shot. Yep. With the one coat, we're still gonna put lines everywhere in all of our corners. Yep. Make sure everything appears to be really straight. Right. But it's not as important with the light, with, uh, with the light pouring down. Cool. Awesome. Well, I'm going to get out of your way and let them turn their music back on. Thanks, Coley. All right, we're going to head back to the office and wrap up the day there. Um, next time we check in here, the plaster will be done, and we'll be rolling into some of our wood floor finishing and our interior trim. It's awfully loud. Let's get out of here. Back at the shop. Uh, if you guys caught last week's Revealed, Ken talked about plywood and fasteners and things like that. I believe tomorrow you're going to see another episode on box construction. Uh, but we have a couple, we have a lot going on in the shop. Um, this is actually for our Cambridge project. Uh, this will be one of the um, veneered, uh, which is a taboo veneer um, that you, if you turn around, you can see a lot of those panels have already been finished with a 5% sheen, 5% sheen, sorry. Um, we went for a quarter sawn maple interior, so it's a little nicer than a standard uh, radial cut ma uh, maple. And then all of our drawers are actually Legra boxes by Bloom. Um, I really like the way they operate. They feel really solid and, and, and strong, but they're a little cumbersome to put together uh, and just take a lot of time. Uh, but yeah, this is the, these are the finished panels here. So it's very raw looking. It doesn't have a high build. So there's not a lot of reflection to it, which is where you get that 5% sheen or what you get from that 5% sheen. Um, you know, really beautiful looking, some, a little bit cumbersome to work with. Uh, there's a lot of fleece backing on some of these these veneers, so when you're once they're finished, that fleece backing kind of stands up. Um, I kind of made the reference before if you were if you're using like almost spray glue or hairspray, and we're spraying you know the arm your arm like the hairs kind of stand up, and you're feeling similar there. But we can come back and kind of buff those off with a really high grit sandpaper. Um, a couple more of these cabinets are put to get being put together, um, getting all the hardware set. set. We, we utilize, uh, you know, for the, the, the hanger rods, uh, removable. They're just similar style to right on our adjustable shelf pin style holes, so five millimeter. Uh, and then what Ian's working on is actually a lot of the kitchen stuff. Uh, so this is a Finex product. 
it's actually a, a gray laminate. And he was, Ian was just saying that, well, yesterday I was out in the shop and I was looking at some of this edge banding and Ian, before I even said something, was like, yeah, I know there's some marks in it. Uh, but Ian, you figured out how to get rid of those marks. Yep, turns out that just like a little bit of a light scuff with a magic eraser is exactly what we need. Like the Mr. Clean thing? Exactly. So how did you figure that out? Uh, we went on the Fenix site and they had some Oh, it said it right on the way. Super <laughs> helpful information. Just Here up. I am thinking that you went like through all of these products <laughs> and you guys just did the most, the, no, the most efficient the, way, the right, right to the manufacturer. Things. So what we were dealing with is, uh, Essentially, they were tooling marks from the edge bander. Yep. Um, and we were seeing them on the face here, and most of the time the edge banding is like if the door, to, if there's a door to door or a door is going to come over it. But there are a few areas that the edge banding is actually an architectural detail that kind of goes up and around cabinetry. So we wanted to make sure that you know, man, there's a lot of light in there. We don't want those seen. So that's a nice find. That's gonna work out. So, um, and like I said last week, Ken talked about uh, this product. Um, which is what we call combo core. I think a couple of you guys commented on other things. Um, everything else has really been moving out into storage and, and getting into some of the job sites, uh, both the Cambridge project that we looked at earlier and as well as the South Boston project. Uh, all of that stuff sitting in storage ready for install. I talked about the plaster bookcase that's gonna be tied into where Colby made sure that that wall was perfectly flat. Um, so that's it for this week's uh, episode of Site Visit. Make sure you guys tune in tomorrow for another episode of Revealed. Subscribe, turn on notifications, follow us on Instagram, do all of that good stuff. Uh, and this week I'm wearing the same clothes except for a brand new shirt from Marine Layer. I know you guys think people are trolling me, but listen, they honestly want to know. Ian thinks I'm weird, Ken thinks I'm weird, Doug thinks I'm weird. But hey, now you have a little bit of style advice. We'll see you guys next week.